Hello, my name is Carissa Wickens and I'm the Assistant Professor of Equine Science and Equine Extension Specialist at the University of Delaware in the Department of Animal and Food Sciences and I'm here today to invite you to join us for an upcoming webinar January 22nd at 7 p.m. Eastern Time focused on stereotypic behaviors in horses. Today I'm standing here with one of our teaching horses in the University of Delaware herd. This is Maggie. She's a 13-year-old quarter horse mare and what she's doing right now for us is actually exhibiting the oral stereotypic behavior of cribbing or what we also call crib biting. So some of you out there may be familiar with this behavior already but basically what Maggie will do or any horse that crib bites they'll take their top incisors and anchor them on a stationary object. They'll pull backwards, arch their neck, and emit an audible grunting noise. So it sounds just like a grunt or almost like a belching sound. Basically what they're doing is they're drawing air into the upper part of their esophagus and then expelling that air, and that's why you hear that grunting sound. This is a behavior that often is viewed as very problematic um, by horse owners and farm managers. Um, some horses are even prevented from entrance into boarding facilities because they exhibit these behaviors. So a lot of folks out there really want to better understand these behaviors, not only for the management aspect of these horses, but also it is viewed as a welfare concern. There are sometimes some health concerns, um, concerns that the horse it doesn't learn as well, or maybe is also um, reduced in their value, that someone wouldn't pay as much for one of these horses. So a lot of owners are concerned about these behaviors, and so the goal of the upcoming webinar is to share some of the latest research with you on stereotypic behaviors, including crib biting, and also to share with you um, some practical hints and tips for things that we can do to try to help reduce the amount of time our horses spend engaged in these behaviors. Once these behaviors are established, unfortunately, they are very hard to completely abolish, but there are things we can do in our farm situation to help these horses out. Um, we really don't understand the absolute underlying mechanism or the causes for these behaviors, but we are getting closer to having a better understanding of these behaviors. Despite being a cribbing horse, um, Maggie in our teaching herd has been a great animal to have. She's excellent with our novice undergraduate students in the, the animal science program. She's also excellent with our 4-H youth and does a really good job teaching youth in our 4-H programs. But also, Maggie is our star clicker trainer in the herd. Maggie, target. Good. And some of the most recent research has investigated learning abilities in horses that exhibit stereotypic behaviors. And it's interesting, some of the findings just indicate that cribbing horses may learn a little differently, um, especially in this positive base reinforcement type of situation where um, they're asked to do a task for a reward. There's some differences. Maggie, target. in how they learn. Um, so that's also very important in terms of better understanding some of the brain mechanisms that might be involved in stereotypies, um, but also again in terms of welfare and the well-being of the horse, we can try to incorporate some of that understanding into the training of these horses. So I would love for you to join us on January 22nd at 7 p.m. for our webcast titled Is It Coping or Is It a Vice? Stereotypic Behaviors and we'll review some of the literature um, and share with you some of what we do know about stereotypic behaviors. So to register for the upcoming January 22nd webcast, just visit www.myhorseuniversity.com and it's a free webinar that you can register for online and we look forward to having you. Thank you.